Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rainbow's first spring webinar of our webinar series on Lepitec. My name is Sean Burnick, and I'm uh, happy to be with everyone here today. It's a nice snowy day up here in Minnesota. Hopefully, you're dealing with some uh, much better weather than we are. Uh, ex excited to be talking to you today about Lepitec, one of Rainbow's revolutionary insecticide products and a number of the protocols and research behind this uh, product. As mentioned, my name is Sean Burnick, and I oversee the operations, sales, uh, and technical support and research and development within Rainbow Tree Care Scientific Advancements. And this is the division within Rainbow Companies that develops science based plant health care protocols, and we work to train professionals in the green industry on how to be successful and achieve predictable results with our protocols. A few housekeeping items before we get started here today. If you have any questions, and I would encourage you to uh, uh, ask as many questions or type as many questions as you can into the questions box uh, on the chat box and we'll address them at the end of the webinar as we have time. And if there's any questions that we don't get to, uh, we'll make sure that we follow up with you with a personal email to address your question after the webinar as well. This webinar is being recorded, so if you wanna to listen to this or if uh, folks in your organizations weren't able to make it today, it will be recorded and saved on our website afterwards. We'll probably have that up on our website for sure in the next few days. Uh, there is a half CEU credit for this 30-minute presentation today for ISA. And if you didn't enter in your ISA CEU number when you registered for this webinar, you can actually type your name and CEU number in to the chat box as well. Let's go ahead and get started here on Lepitec. So my outcomes for this presentation today, we want to talk about what Lepitec is some of the advantages of Lepitec and why you might use it. We'll discuss some of the research that Rainbow has done over the years, and then talk about common insect and mite protocols that you can use to incorporate this into your business. One of the neat things about Lepitec, uh, we first started doing research with this back in the mid 2000s, and it was really spurred on by what Rainbow saw as a missing in the industry in that we didn't have a soil applied systemic insecticide product that could be used for lepidopterin, caterpillars, uh, primarily that feed on the leaves, and then also for some of the common spider mites. We were really relegated to traditional spray options when managing those pests. And so we worked hard to identify if there was any active ingredients out there that could work systemically when applied to the soil that would work on mites and caterpillars. So in 2009, we actually received EPA registration and launched out our product Lepitec, which serves to, to, to be effective against those two categories of, of insect and mite pests, as well as many other leaf feeding insects that Lepitec is effective on as well. We'll go through those today. Um, today in the presentation, we're only going to focus on Lepitec, which is a soil applied product, but note that Rainbow also has a product called Lepitec Infusible, which is actually applied as a root flare tree injection treatment. Uh, and that's typically used in areas where we can't apply products to the soil um, and as a more of a niche product in those specific situations. So Lepitec has the active ingredient acephate. Acephate's been around for many years after, the world, after World War II. It's a very common active ingredient. Uh, but even though it's been around for many years, it never received a full EPA registration as a soil applied treatment, um, really until Rainbow took that on and, and took, took that as a leadership position to make that happen. It comes in a 10 ounce pat, pouch and in this white pouch, you can see here, it actually comes in uh, uh, little granules that are that's uh, mixed with water. Um, each pouch treats 25 inches at the high rate and 50 inches at the low rate. Typically, we recommend using the high rate for insect and mite pests on trees greater than 15 inches. 
and it is labeled for soil injection, but not soil drench. Uh, what's really neat about Lepitec, you can use it as a just-in-time treatment because it moves very rapidly into trees and plants after you apply it to the soil, typically within just a few days or less, um, and maybe up to two or three weeks on very large trees. So if you compare that with, say, Zytec or a metacloprid active ingredient, it's almost half the time or less than, than a metacloprid. It does have a shorter residual of 30 to 45 days, so it doesn't stay in the soil as long, which has both pros and cons to it that we'll talk about later in the presentation. Lepitec, uh, as mentioned, is the only soil applied product for treatments of lepidopteran caterpillars and mites. It's also effective on a number of other key leaf feeding insects. Japanese beetle, plant bugs, leaf hoppers, really anything that's feeding on the leaf surface can be controlled with Lepitec. And as mentioned, it's very fast acting. Here's the spectrum of control if you look at the labeled pests on here. So many different uh, caterpillars and lepidopteran insects, bagworms, cankerworms, webworms, caterpillars, uh, tussock moth larvae, budworms, uh, many different lepidopteran pests. The only ones that it really is not effective on are lepidopteran borers, such as the clear wing borers like ash lilac borer or the banded ash clear wing borer. Um, it's also not effective on Zimmerman pine moth, and that's really because it moves very rapidly up through the xylem tissue and accumulates in very high concentrations only in the leaves of plants and shrubs that are treated. Other insects outside of the lepidopteran include Japanese beetles, scales, aphids, other leaf beetles, lace bugs, again, a variety of different leaf feeding insects. And then the other really neat feature about Lepitec as a soil application is that it will provide control against spider mites, such as the spruce spider mite and many of our conifers and evergreens and then the honey locust mite. So both cool season and warm season mite categories. Here's some, a few data slides I'll, I'll show you to just get you a feel of some of the performance with Lepitec. This is on pine sawfly. And this was a research project that was done by Ohio State University. And you can see uh, in this particular trial, the applications were done on May 4th. Pine sawflies are typically feeding in late spring um, early summer time frame uh, applications. We didn't see control in one day after treatment on the sawfly larvae. It takes a little bit of time for this to get in the tree, but after 12 days and 26 days, if you compare the blue, uh, which is our untreated control plants in these research trials, and uh, it's, it's showing the percent of sawfly larvae that were present on the untreated control in the blue versus in the purple, we're looking at the treated uh, uh, Scots pine here. So 12 days and 26 days uh, after treatment, we had a significant reduction in pine sawfly. Here's research data from work that we did with Dr. Dan Herms at Ohio State um, and looking at Lepitec as a soil application for spruce spider mite on balsam fir. So these applications were done in mid-spring with Lepitec, and here we actually compared them to two very common miticides that are um, applied uh, for more traditional mite use. Um, Lucid, which is abamectin, was combined with the 1% hort oil, and then Forbid is another spray formulation um, from Bayer. And you can see in this trial here that Lepitec performed very well and very similar to both the Lucid and the Forbid, both 27 days after application as well as 43 days after application. So a one-time soil application performed extremely well and just as good as two common industry standard miticide sprays. Here on a warm season mite, this is on honey locust mite on Skyline honey locust. This was done by Dr. Frederick Miller at the Morton Arboretum, looking at the number of mites 
the untreated bar here in the bluish gray coloration, very heavy press pressure, over 100, almost 150 mites uh, per sample of the honey locust mite were found on the untreated controls. And, and just only a, a few mites, less than five mites on the Lepitex soil injection. And what's neat here, we'll talk about the residual of Lepitex being 30 to 45 days approximately. Well, we see that even 60 days after application, we're still seeing hardly any uh, honey locust mites on these trees. It's not so much that the residual length of control will last 60 days, but we timed these treatments such that it was at the, just at the onset or just prior to anticipated mite feeding. We were able to get control. We didn't allow those mite populations to build. And so we see that one application, at least on both spruce spider mite and honey locust mite, if well timed, can actually provide season long control or at least knock back those night mite populations so you only have to do one application per year. Also works on scales. This is on euonymus scale, showing a very good control at both the low and the high rate on euonymus. This is something over the years where we've continued to refine the rates for different shrub, insect, and mite pests. Um, and this is a scale. Now, the one thing I'll mention with scale control, it does work on scales, but we have a, a better product called TransTech that we really recommend as our go-to treatment for scales, just because of that length of residual only lasting 30 to 45 days. Uh, most of our scale pests feed uh, and hatch, and, and uh, crawlers are feeding for a much longer period of time, and TransTech has a longer residual. But again, scales feeding on the leaves, you, you can see control with Lepitec as well. Here's something I think is really neat uh, on gouty oak gall. Many of our oak galls have become more and more prevalent in the past decade or so. We get lots and lots of calls uh, from practitioners on uh, oak galls, gouty oak gall, horned oak gall, uh, some of the bullet galls. And we did some research here. This is with Dr. Anad Prasad. And these are smaller swamp white oaks, mind you. But we did applications in early June, and we were able to um, see that as of September, we significantly reduced the number of galls per tree on uh, these swamp white oaks. And I'll preface this, when we've done research on trees less or larger than 20 inches, we don't see the same level of control in one season, uh, but we are seeing great prelim preliminary results on these gall species on smaller trees, less than 20 inches. Um, another part of this protocol, typically it's gonna take a good two or three seasons of continued control against these uh, galls that have leaf feeding insects or mites to really clean up the trees. And that's an important expectation, but I think there's some promising, at least preliminary work that we've seen that allows us to, uh, to recommend this as part of a gall management strategy. Let's look now at some of the protocols on caterpillars. We'll look at a few different caterpillar pro protocols uh, on common uh, leaf feeding caterpillars that we can control with Lepitec. First one is bagworm. And bagworm definitely is a huge problem in a lot of our Midwestern states. Uh, we don't have this issue up in Minnesota. It hasn't moved that far north yet, but we see it certainly in Ohio, Illinois, Indiana. Uh, Kentucky, Mason-Dixon line south. Uh, and this is a certainly an insect pest that you'll have homeowners really wanting to control. They don't like the bags hanging on their trees. It affects a very wide host range from cypress, juniper, spruce, to a number of different uh, deciduous trees like honey locusts. Uh, typically, it has one generation per year. And what we've seen with our research data is that if we can treat uh, for bagworm larvae when they're feeding very early in early summer or late spring, we can get very high levels of control against bagworm. And you can see here, uh, this is a, a trial done on honey locust in Illinois. Uh, the Lepitec treated honey locust on the right and the untreated control on the left. And at both of the observation dates, looking at the blue bars representing the untreated control again, and then you can hardly see the purple bars here. Those are the treated plants 
looking here at percent defoliation, so just significantly less uh, bags uh, because we're controlling those larvae feeding on the leaves earlier in the growing season, and we don't see the associated defoliation. And this is really neat because historically, for many of these insects, the caterpillars and the mites, we've had to spray them. And that'd be a huge challenge in our urban areas um, to get reach the tops of very high, tall trees. Also, if you're spraying around buildings, um, we all know about all the challenges that we face in trying to spray urban trees and get good uniform coverage. Well, this allows us to do a systemic application against a number of uh, very common uh, pest categories. Next, we'll focus on the gypsy moth here. And it's important that we know the biology and life cycle of these pests. And we're not going to do, do a deep dive into the biology life cycle of all the insects. But what you want to know with Lepitec um, is that you can use growing degree days or host phenology to help time when you should do soil applications of Lepitec. Because it moves so rapidly in the tree, you can treat these pests just prior to when they're going to be anticipated to be feeding on trees. So using growing degree days, uh, which is the heat accumulation days, all of, a lot of our insect, um, or all of our insects, specific stages of their life cycle coincide with those accumulation of uh, growing degree days. And so you can time lepitec applications similar to you would for your spray applications. So with gypsy moth, for example, we want to target these applications to occur such that the greatest amount of active ingredient from Lepitec is in the leaves of the tree when those uh, younger, smaller caterpillars are feeding. And that's typically going to be in late spring in May and June. And so this stage um, after those eggs hatch is when we're targeting the Lepitec to be applied. Very good research data with Lepitec and Gypsy Moth, both on small trees here. This was showing um, control over a, uh, basically starting at day one, we saw very rapid control on paper birch, and that lasted for 13, 29, and 61 days as we did our evaluations with Gypsy Moth. Also see that on oak. This is from Dr. Chris Williamson at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, in this particular trial, we actually compared spring and uh, fall applications of acelaprin uh, to that of Lepitec, and you can see Lepitec performing very well in these trials um, on gypsy moth as compared to the untreated control. So a few other caterpillars that we can use Lepitec for that are very common in different markets across the country. Mimosa webworm is one on uh, honey locust primarily, is the target host species here. You can also see this on mimosa. What's interesting to note about mimosa webworm, it's actually, uh, the adults are actually out later in the growing season, and the eggs are hatching more in early to mid-summer. So we're going to time our Lepitec applications typically to be in uh, June, July time frame. Uh, this is a huge problem in and around the Missouri, Kansas area, uh, parts of Indiana, Ohio as well on honey locusts. A number of folks have been getting very good results with Lepitec uh, applications on mimosa webworm. Fall webworm in, uh, infests walnuts, pecans, cherry, very wide host range. Crab apple is a very common one. Uh, this can have multiple generations, and so with caterpillars that feed for longer than 30 to 40 days, you may have to make a repeat application. We'll talk about that more at the end of the presentation, or for caterpillars like webworm that can have multiple generations, mind you that you're going to have to make a repeat application uh, under very severe infestations if um, they continue to have multiple generations or feed for a longer period of time. So webworm is another one that we can target. Eastern tent caterpillar, again, on a number of the prunus species. Uh, this one only has one generation per year, and this uh, starts to attack trees very early in the growing season. So you want to actually make your applications for eastern tent caterpillar uh, as the leaves are developing and growing out um, very early in the spring of the year for tent caterpillar. 
canker worm, uh, huge infestations of canker worm down in the southeast in the past few decades. This typically, like many caterpillars, their populations are very cyclical in nature. Some years they can be very high and uh, start to uh, de-escalate over time, and then over time those populations will build again. Uh, we've had some very severe canker worm populations in parts of the southeast and other areas of the country. Again, Lepitec is a very effective uh, treatment for that. Um, oak is a very, very uh, common host species for canker worm that we treat for. Uh, typically, those eggs, they're overwintering on twigs, and so those larvae are going to be hatching again early in the spring, late spring part of the year. So you want to time your applications to be very early. Here's a tree I mentioned before, very challenging to spray this tree in this particular neighborhood. Um, so what the arborists did here is they went in instead of spraying, they actually did a soil application of Lepitec. You can see all the houses nearby, you're very tight on, on the, the, the dwellings there. And then also to get coverage on these large mature trees like this and uniform coverage can be very challenging. Um, you have windy days that you can't spray at all. I was just in Kansas doing a workshop earlier this week, and they had 20, 30 mile per hour winds. Uh, it allowed many of the folks to come to our workshop because they weren't out spraying. They couldn't spray. So on days like those, Lepitec provides you a very flexible option for doing systemic soil applications. Here's a great result. This is on canker worm uh, down in Charlotte, um, real close to that tree that I just showed you. The tree on the left is treated with Lepitec. The tree on the, the right is untreated. Now let's talk about Japanese beetle. Probably in the last six, eight years, Lepitec has really become the go-to treatment for Japanese beetle, uh, specifically on Lindens and Tilia species. Um, and we'll talk more about that in the next few slides. But uh, with Japanese beetle, note that it has a very wide host range, feeds on turf, overwinters in the soil, and these adults are actually coming out and emerging in, uh, in June and July, depending on where you're at in the country. Right around July 4th is always a good date for us up here in the Twin Cities. They get, they're going to start then feeding on a number of host species in the landscape, uh, lindens, maples, roses, many different species. We've had very severe infestations here in the Twin Cities in the last few years. Lepitec can be a very effective treatment um, against Japanese beetle. These are research products. Some of our first research done by Dr. Dan Herms uh, back in 2007. We, we did applications. These were done in uh, mid-June, June 12th. And you can see here uh, just a significantly reduced amount of defoliation on the treated versus the untreated. And the picture there kind of uh, of the treated tree on the left and the tree in the middle is also untreated compared to the Lepitec treated tree on the right. We don't see that um, same level of defoliation in August and September from Japanese beetle. Many of you are probably aware of um, the issues with neonicotinoids and all of the public scrutiny around uh, neonicotinoids with bees and pollinators. Some of it grounded in science, some not. Um, but there's been a great amount of awareness about using products with the active ingredient imidacloprid, which is really the, the go-to standard for treating systemic soil applications to lindens and uh, uh, other species that get attacked by Japanese beetle. And um, what's neat about Lepitec is that it really allows you to make a just-in-time application and really target your application timing such that you're not treating trees that are in flower, that may be visited from pollinators. And with lindens, that can be very challenging because Japanese beetles will feed right at the time when, when flowers are dropping. And so if we're going to be doing soil applied products, especially with Zytec, um, like we did in the past, you had to allow enough time for the treatment to be uh, absorbed and, and translocated throughout the tree. So with Lapitec, we can make a treatment, and because it moves so quickly in just a matter of a few days into trees, you can actually time applications to occur after flowering with Japanese beetle. 
And so there's other flowering species out there, tulip trees, uh, rain trees, crab apples, black locusts, where you, you have to be very careful about when they're in bloom. They get heavily uh, trafficked by pollinators and other species. And so products that have very rapid uptake and very short residual become a very good um, pollinator stewardship management, uh, can be a very good in your poll pollinator stewardship management plans. And what a lot of folks have are, are doing currently with lindens is they'll go out just at petal fall and they'll make a Lepitec application. And because it may take a few days, maybe even up to a week or so uh, or more on larger trees, they'll actually spray the tree with a traditional insecticide, bifenthrin or, or permethrin, after the, the flowers and petal drop. So there's no more flowers on those trees. They can also use conserve, which is very bee friendly as well. And those spray treatments will last the duration that it will take for the Lepitec to get up in the tree. So you go out on the site that same day, you're gonna do a Lepitec soil application, and then you'll do a spray application. And it seems that that will actually um, get a lot of folks by for the whole season for Japanese beetle. Uh, whereas with traditional sprays, in some parts of the country, you may have to do two, three, or four spray applications alone just to cover the long feeding period of Japanese beetle. Uh, it's also important that um, with Lepitec, because Zytec, Transtec, and, and products that have either imidacloprid or dinotephrion can no longer be used on tilia species, we can also use Lepitec to fill that gap now uh, as industry professionals. talk about mites here. So uh, Lepitec can be effectively used on cool season mites like spruce spider mite. We see this on spruce and, and other conifers. Um, we can do applications uh, early in the spring, right about this time of the year, April, early May, or we can do applications in late fall on our conifer species. These mites are active in the spring and the fall of the year. So we can target them uh, in either uh, either time of the year, they're not active during the warm summer months. Um, whereas with our warm season mites, and this would primarily be mites on oaks, honey locusts, um, and many other species, we're actually going to time our applications at in the early summer months uh, to be effective against warm season mites. With mites, it's important that we're looking for symptoms. You often can see a little speck stippling or chlorotic uh, speckles on, on leaves. You can actually monitor for the mites themselves by doing a tap test and um, looking to see if there's mites. And remember, our typically our, our predator mites are gonna be very fast moving. Those are the good mites, whereas our, uh, our mites that are, are the pest mites are more slow moving. Uh, when you squish our pest mites, sometimes they'll turn a greenish color, whereas our predator mites will be other colors. But oftentimes doing a tap test and looking for the mites themselves are a great way to look for the presence of mites. Um, and you can do that easily, but just by holding a piece of paper under and you know tapping the branches like are shown here in that conifer with either your hand or a stick or something. So real quick to finish off here, we just got a few minutes uh, application of Lepitec. It's applied as a soil injection treatment right at the base of the tree within 18 inches of the trunk. And we make applications right at the base of the tree because there's a large, dense amount of fine roots that are great for absorbing different insecticides and growth regulators right at the base of the tree. We apply for trees less than 15 inches. We use the low rate. Uh, for trees greater than 15 inches, we use the high rate. And we want to make sure that when we mix up uh, Lepitec, mix it with water, uh, we're agitating the tank or shaking our backpack to get all of the Lepitec into solution. It goes pretty readily in solution, but it does require slight agitation. Water is the carrier, so you can really use any soil injection probe uh, that you have. Even deep root soil fertilized probes can work. Um, we recommend and sell a HTI 2000, which is our soil injection system that allows the applicator to precisely dose the specific dose into each injection site. 
as well as for the entire tree. It's a very accurate and precise system uh, that, that is uh, probably more accurate than any other soil injection system on the market. <clears throat> we want to make those injection sites two to six inches deep and space them evenly around the base of the tree with at least four injection sites per tree. From an application timing standpoint, we want to make our applications at least one to two weeks prior to insect activity. Um, it's going to take less time for smaller trees and a little more time for it to be absorbed and be taken up into larger trees as we've talked about. You can use growing degree days or host finality to time your applications as well. And then for things that with for gypsy moth, for example, which is really feeding right at about bud break and early leaf emergence, it's important Lepitec won't be absorbed and translocated if there's no leaves on the tree. So with gypsy moth, we want to make sure, like on oaks, that we have half to three-fourths of uh, leaf development before we make our Lepitec application. It doesn't have a long residual in the soil, so you really have to time it with the host phenology but also know that you're trying to time it uh, such that the product gets up into the into the plants very quickly to work on the smaller end star caterpillars like most of our insecticides treating for those smaller caterpillars is going to be more effective than when these caterpillars get larger again retreatment may be necessary if pests feed for for greater than 30 days and then remember with systemic applications that are applied to the soil, if the soils are very dry, it's not a bad idea to encourage your homeowner customers to water the trees after application to encourage uptake and, and translocation. Uh, we don't recommend this being applied during dormancy because it doesn't have it doesn't have the length of it doesn't bind to this it, it just doesn't have the length of residual to allow for that. Talked about the gypsy moth, and we can use the growing degree days as we talked about. So expectations, efficacy can begin as little as just a few days, three to 10 days on small to medium sized trees, and one to three weeks um, or less on larger trees. Of course, soil moisture will impact that. If it's drier soils, it's gonna take longer. If they're nice, moist soils, it'll go in much quicker and then the residual will last for 30 to 45 days. So just to wrap it up here, Lepitec, it's very effective on a wide range of pests. The key ones in the marketplace are the mites, the cool season and the warm season, uh, spider mites, caterpillars, uh, Japanese beetle, um, many other leaf feeding insects. Some of those are some of the common ones. Um, it's very moves fast into the tree, which allows us to time applications to be just in time, uh, allows the product to get up into the tree if we have infested trees. It gets up there very quickly and starts working quicker. You can also use this um, as part of uh, your, your applications if you're concerned about pollinator host species and time it around flowering. And it has that 30 to 45 day residual. So before we get into questions, um, the Lepitec webinar, as I mentioned, it was the first of our spring webinar series. We have uh, four additional webinars that are going to be coming up in the next few weeks here, all of which have CEUs and I think are great timely webinars to help out with some of your, your plant health care applications this spring and summer. Um, if you go to our website at www dot treecarescience.com you can actually go down and see our spring webinar series and you can go in as long as you're there today you can register for the upcoming ones we got a great one coming up on our revolutionary uh, shrub growth regulator product called trim tech that's really taken off in the landscape industry over the past few years uh, we'll talk about trans tech which is our systemic insecticide that's widely used for soft and armored scales, emerald ash borer, as well as a number of other uh, difficult to control pests, woolly adelgid and, and elongate scale. We'll talk about Cambostat, which is our tree growth regulator, and then Dutch elm disease uh, later on in May. So those can be registered for on our website there. And if you liked what you heard today, 
sign up for these, share it with other colleagues in the industry, and we'll spread the word. We had uh, actually uh, folks from over 25 states sign up for our webinar today. So I was really pleased with the number of people that are out there and signed up and listening. So if you're able to stay on, I'll address some questions for a few minutes here. And if you got to drop off, just feel free to drop off and um, you can shoot me a follow-up email. My contact information here is on the screen now. And uh, we're going to pull up the questions here and, and go through those. Okay, first question is around uh, left deck. Why can we only apply it as a soil injection and not a soil drench treatment? Well. Uh, it has to do with the EPA registration around it. Uh, EPA didn't want us to, really, they didn't want homeowners buying Lepitec uh, for the most part and applying it as a soil drench. And because soil injections are typically done by professionals, they wanted this to be a professional product. Um, Drenching the product can be done, um, or was done, excuse me, in our, in our research projects and many of them, and it's, it's not an efficacy thing. It'll be the same efficacy as soil injection, but unfortunately, the label doesn't allow you to apply it as a, a drench treatment, which is kind of interesting because if you go into any, any retail garden center, you'll find a number of acephate products that homeowners can buy. So what about treating lindens with Lepitec for aphids, which is before flowering? Um, one thing, and, and first of all, I'll say with acephate, they haven't documented that it moves into the flowers um, or the pollen like they have with some of the other systemic products. But I think as a best practice, we want to avoid uh, applying this if we are concerned about it moving into flowers. I would say most of our systemic applications you know, there, there's a possibility or potential. So to avoid that overall, we would apply it after flowering. But you could apply this in, in our research projects, actually with Dan Herms there at Ohio State, we did apply those prior to flowering. He didn't notice any impact on bees or pollinators with it. And he did get very good control of Japanese beetles. So I would expect you to get control. But if you're concerned about the pollinator aspect, um, you want to apply that after flowering. Uh, question on cool season mites. Uh, spring uh, was mid-May. What was the fall timing for up here? Assuming that's probably in the upper Midwest. Good question. I kind of breezed over that a little bit. So the, the application timing is typically going to be in that September time frame, and that'll cover you for September and October when those cool season mites are going to be active. You can also use growing degree days, which um, uh, we're in my presentation there to time it. And with the growing degree days with Lepitec for all of the pests that we talked about, you're trying to apply it one to two weeks prior to the growing degree days when you're going to have the anticipated pest feeding for any insect or mite to really hone in on timing. Okay. Uh, those were great questions. Uh, we appreciate everybody joining on here today. If you have any additional questions, please shoot them my way or you can contact us at our toll-free 1-800 number there at 1-877-272-6747. Have a fantastic rest of your Friday and a great weekend, everybody. And please join us for uh, our remaining webinars coming up in the next few weeks here. Thank you.